yearly empties for 2021. Let's disregard the fact that we are now halfway through 2022. Yes, let's be a little bit different this time round, although I'm always late with yearly empties anyway, so, but this time I'm really late. This video is literally gonna be so long that I am dreading f filming it. I've started it now, so there's no choice but to go ahead with it. So let's get on with it. Makeup, face products. Bourjois Healthy Mix Serum Foundation. I think it's discontinued. I've had it for a really, really long time. I still have a video of a haul from like five or six years ago when I bought this. I love this foundation. It is just so natural, radiant, lightweight. I don't think you can get it anymore, but I really liked it. I was glad I finished it because it's just so old. Two other products that are just as old as the foundation are from L'Oreal and these are the CC cream and the BB cream. They were fine. They gave me a little bit of a orange hue and as far as I know, these are no longer available either. A bit of a newer product, MGC Derma anti-aging day CBD BB concealer repair cream. I thought this was just a cream. And then when I put it on my face, I was like, hmm, what is this brown tint on my face? And then I've realized that it's actually, as it says, BB cream, really. It was okay. I don't remember really either liking or disliking it, but uh, well, the packaging was very bad because you can see that it's actually cracked around the lid. I forgot to mention that I will of course give you an estimate of what those products are worth. This is an estimate of the worth not the price that I actually paid as I just mentioned some of those products are really old, years old literally I cannot possibly trace where I purchased them and how much I paid for them. So this is literally either an estimated value of the product if it's been discontinued or the current value um, retail price, basically what it costs in the store. I normally buy stuff with discounts and I have my own way of shopping. That saves me a lot of money. So I would say that I normally pay about 70 to 80% of the price maximum. NARS Radiant Creamy Concealer. I did like this concealer. I don't know why people seem to love it so much. I did like it, but was a concealer. Inglot powder. This is, I uh, think, I don't know what it's called, Freedom System. It's basically without the packaging, you put it in a magnetic palette. Um, I finished it quite quickly. This was, um, oh yeah, it is Freedom System. That's what it says on the back. Uh, it's an HD powder. I genuinely don't really remember what I thought about this, um, about this powder. Maybelline Master Sculpt Contour and highlight. Those products have been lying around for so long, they're so dusty. I've wiped some of them off, but not um, this particular one. It was okay. The one thing I didn't like was that you actually had both highlight and the contouring powder in the same pan with no separation. So um, it just, it was really difficult to use one without getting the other on the brush because they were basically in the same pan. Other than that, I really don't remember having very many thoughts about this product. Again, from the Freedom System from Inglot, this was a contouring powder in 502. Again, I really don't remember much about it. I probably neither loved it nor hated it. Um, I also have a Maybelline bronzer. I don't really get to use up very many bronzers. Um, this one was, this one is Dream Sun Bronzing Powder in 01 Blonde. This one, the, the pan was, not the pan, um, the product was so hard pressed, it was just difficult to even get it on the brush. And also it was quite light, which could be good if you're going for something really subtle. Uh, but overall, I just didn't like it. I mean, not, I, I didn't dislike it. I just didn't really feel particularly positively about it because of how hard pressed it was, how difficult it was to actually get it on the brush to actually show any color on the face. Bourjois Aqua Blush. I don't know the shade. It's no longer visible on the packaging. I really like this. I like cream liquid blushes. And this one was just so subtle and it had this cooling effect on the face. I really loved it. 
I used it up because firstly it was old. I actually have a review of it on my channel. And second, the pump just stopped working. So I had to open the whole thing to get some of the product out, which I found a little bit annoying. Nevertheless, I really like this product, although I know that it is now, I believe, discontinued as well. I've just realized that I've actually used up quite a lot of really old products, which makes me feel pretty satisfied with the last year's empties. Now moving on to mascaras, which is a, a staple in almost any makeup junkies routine. Mine, I've been using mascaras since I was 14 years old. So this is something that you will literally never see me without, unless on a rare occasion, I'm not wearing any makeup at all. Givenchy Noir Couture Mascara. This is one of the best mascaras I have ever had. In fact, I am tempted to buy it again, even though I almost never repurchase items because I like trying new stuff. This was just that good. This one was top five mascaras I have ever used. And as I said, I've been literally using mascaras for over 20 years. I have three Benefit mascaras. And I don't know what it is with Benefit mascaras, but they irritate my eyes like nothing else. I literally have used three of them, three different ones. And I had, I don't know what I had, but there was something in my eye all the time. My eyes were irritated. I just couldn't wait to get those mascaras off of my eyes. I don't know why. I, I just really don't understand. I mean, no, they are not even, they were not even old. I was just thinking to myself that maybe they were quite old, but this is definitely brand new. It was, I've had it maybe for a couple of months when I opened it. So I don't know, I think it's just a formula. So we have Benefit Roller Lush, um, Benefit The Real and Benefit Bad Gal Bang. Can't recommend either one, unfortunately, but I think it's just my personal issue with Benefit mascaras. Uh, they all have amazing reviews. And actually this one is my niece's favorite. Two of my nieces love this mascara. And this one is a favorite of one of my friends. So clearly they don't have the same issue. Now this product literally deserves a carpet, a red carpet rolled out for it. This is by Avon. Gosh, there's my hair stuck to it. This is by Avon. I can finally admit how long I've had this. I've had this for, I think nearly 20 years. Yes, I have used up a product that is nearly 20 years old. This was a beautiful, beautiful eyeshadow duo. The formula was flawless. They looked beautiful. The color was beautiful. If there was anything wrong with this eyeshadow, of course, I'm not, you know, I'm not a masochist. I'm not going to be putting it on my face, but there really wasn't. I did not have any issues whatsoever. So normally I wouldn't admit to how old some of my products are, but this is literally the oldest product, the oldest. Yeah, I think this might have been the oldest makeup product I have had in my collection. And I've used it up. I loved it still. Um, yeah, I'm glad it's out of my collection just because of its age. It's almost the same age as one of my nieces. Now this is a Rimmel lipstick. This is called Moisture Renew Lipstick in Vintage Pink. I've actually made a video with this lipstick where I was basically just trying to see how many coats you actually get in a lipstick. Um, the color was terrible on me. I looked like a zombie basically. Um, so that's how I used it up. It's still an empty, but I literally used the entire lipstick up within a few hours when I was making that video. So. It's not exactly the same as with other products when I've been using them. It was a personal use, everyday use for at times, yes and yes. The color is terrible. I have another one of these. I need to remember to give it to someone, most likely one of my nieces. This is a lipstick by Estee Lauder. It is called Estee Lauder Pure Color Lipstick in Candy Shimmer. I had this lipstick in a number of my project pans in the past. Project pans? Project pan? I suppose um, it the, the shade, you can actually see the shade. It was this 
pale pink. It really reminded me of the 90s. Like in the 90s, people really didn't care much about what makeup actually looked like on them. It was just that, hey, nice lipstick, let's put it on. Um, that was basically the attitude and this lipstick was um, kind of reminding me of the 90s of those pink pearly um, shades that <laughs> never really suited anyone but everyone was wearing them. Bare Minerals Moxie Lipstick in Live Large. I also had it, as you can see from the markings, in a project pan. I genuinely cannot really remember anything about this. I was surprised to see it in my notebook because, as I said before, I've done most of this research in January because uh, I intended to shoot this video in January. Um, I didn't even remember I had this. Um, I had this lipstick in my empties. I'm currently using another one of those um, in my current project pan and I'm actually using it as a blush. Okay, so with this lighting, you can't probably really see what it looks like, but it's amazing. I am now intending to try other lipsticks as a blush instead of on my lips because it didn't really work on my lips very well, but it does work so well on my face. It's such a beautiful color. So that's how I'm basically using the other one. I did not use this one on my face, so I have no idea what it would look like as a blush. And the last makeup product is by Max Factor. This is Max Factor, I don't know what it's called. It's just lip gloss in 70 Luscious Amethyst. One of my older products, not not like that Avon eyeshadow, not 20 years old, um, but oldish. And this was also in a number of my um, projects pan. So I'm kind of glad that I got rid of it. The color wasn't great on me. It was metallic, mauvey pink, I guess. Um, so yeah, I'm glad I, you know, I, I am, um, I'm glad that I finished it just because I, <laughs> kind of grew a little bit tired of having this lip gloss around when I was trying to use it up and I just kept on failing, basically. Gosh. I'm rushing so much that literally I'm having heart palpitations because <laughs> I know that I have so little time and so much more to show you. So this is all the makeup that I've used up in 2021 and I have calculated the approximate cost of the makeup that I've used up and that came to 331 pounds and 92 pence. The next category are nail polishes. I have a huge collection of nail polishes, really. I don't know how many I have, I dread to count, but I have loads. I always paint my nails myself, so I kind of get to use up um, a few nail polishes every year. You can't really tell. This is a gray nail polish from OPI. Um, I had another nail polish break in transit together with this one so the green spilled on everything else that was in the box and this one is in my point 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 you know the ballet shoe exactly um i think it was a very sheer nail polish but i do remember really liking the color then i have this revlon nail polish oh it was that in yes it was in my project pan this one was in 585 Bohemian. This was actually a fairly new nail polish and by new I mean just maybe a couple of years old. I I think I bought it in Bath. Um, I think I went there for my birthday a few years back. Um, I just didn't like the color. I bought it at TK Maxx, I think. The next one is from number seven. I have quite a lot of nail polishes from number seven because I used to get a lot of vouchers for number seven, um, I used to shop at Boots Loads um, many years ago. I rarely shop there now. This one, well, it doesn't actually, it doesn't actually show you the shade anymore, but this was really pretty. I love those like metallic um, shades and this is such a bright scarlet red. Um, so yes, this was a beautiful color. I think it was kind of growing a little stale, so that's why I decided to use it up. Then I have Sally Hansen Lux Lace Top Coat. Again, this is not an old nail polish. It's actually quite new by my standards. I can't remember why I used it up. Um, anyways, it was, it was nice. It was um, a top coat. It was good to use with nail polishes that maybe I didn't like so much. It would just make my manicure a little bit more interesting. And then the last nail polish I have is from L'Oreal and this is a clear nail polish. I, you know, 
have no thoughts about it. It's a clear nail polish, basically. And the total for the nail polishes used up in 2021 is 41 pounds and 42 pence. I have two brushes that I am including in empties because they started to fall apart, basically, as you will be able to tell in a second. Um, I, I mean, you know, I, I just can't do anything about it. Look at this. <laughs> this is a buffing brush. Um, yeah, it was shedding, as you can see. Um, I had literally hair all over my face when I was using it, and it was the same with this one. These are both from Real Techniques. So I don't know whether it's because maybe the quality isn't so great. Um, I do, I'm kind of wondering whether um, through washing, perhaps I dissolved some of the glue that was holding the bristles to the handle and maybe that's why the bristles started to come out. I'm not entirely sure, but clearly you can see that these are not um, the kind of brushes you can continue um, using and I have plenty more brushes I can um, use instead. So the total for the brushes is approximately 11 pounds and 99 pence. Moving on, face products. Righty ho, let's start with retinols and tretinoin products. Now, most of these aside from one are prescription. So I have one tube of differin. In the UK, you can get it on prescription only. That's 45 grams. I kind of i think used it for acne i think initially that's what i got it prescribed for but my skin has been really good um lately so then i started to use it on keratosis pilaris sporadically so it never really worked then i have non-prescription uh, retinol and this is philosophy help me <laughs> is that the name no um retinol light treatment I actually did like it. Um, I used it at first when I started prescription tretinoin because tretinoin, of course, would irritate my skin. My skin is still actually flaking to this day and I've been using it for a number of years now. So I would sometimes alternate and I would use this instead of um, the prescription one just to kind of, you know, calm my skin and then I would again start tretinoin and the whore, the whore, the whore. <laughs> The whole circle would start all over again but now my skin is very much used to aside from this bit of flaking which doesn't even happen a lot um i'm i'm perfectly fine so i'm no longer using well i am still using retinol because it just comes in some of the products they have but i don't specifically shop for retinol anymore and since i, I can't really hold it in any other way i'm just gonna show this to you this is from Dermatica. This is an online kind of like pharmacy, I guess, but they, I think specialized in tretinoin. At the time when I was uh, subscribing to them, um, there was actually a waiting list. Uh, but now, you know, I've been using them for a number of years. So I have used that one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten of those last year. And I, at the moment, am using tretinoin 0.1 with niacinamide and azelaic acid, but previously I was also using it with hydroquinone for a little while, but this is something that you can't really get prescribed for too long because there were some issues with, I think, skin turning blue or green or something like that if you used it for too long. So I'm no longer using hydroquinone. So yeah, um, it's primarily just niacinamide, azelaic acid, and as I said, tretinoin 0.1%. And the total for my tretinoin slash retinols uh, comes to 309 pounds and 20 pence. The tretinoin prescription, that's over 20 pounds every month. So I'm not complaining. Next we have sunscreen. And I don't know how this is possible, but I've used only two sunscreen products last year. Genuinely, I regret not um, using sunscreen for longer. I literally have been using sunscreen on an everyday basis, only this, yeah. And it was a big, 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 big mistake because this is why I still have hyperpigmentation on my forehead because I was a lot of the time outside and I didn't use SPF and then I had literally like a melasma mask on my forehead that is still fading and it's been a few years. So the two products that I have, well, one is from Benefit. This is the Specialist Dream Screen 
SPF 45. The other one I used was by Dr. Barbara Storm, Sun Drops SPF 50. I really like this product, but it is so expensive. It's crazy expensive. Um, so honestly, I don't remember how I got it, but I don't think I would be buying it unless, of course, I had a lot of money to spend. Uh, it was very nice though. And the total for the two comes to 137 pounds for two products. The next category will be face serums and oils and leave-on treatments. Paula's Choice C15 Super Booster, 15% vitamin C with vitamin E plus ferulic acid. I've used this for, I think, a couple of years. And last year, around December, it actually gave me a full-blown allergic reaction. I couldn't first figure out what it was. My face was basically swollen. And it kept on happening, so I basically had to start excluding products from my makeup and beauty routine. Finally, it came down to this, and I was heartbroken because I really like it. Um, but it literally made my face swell and ooze liquid. It was literally as if you were having an allergic reaction to food. There was absolutely no difference. I didn't even know that was possible when it comes to a beauty product. So I cannot use this anymore. And it's a shame because I actually had a full replacement for this. Might be going to waste. Two more products by Paula's Choice that have not yet given me an allergic reaction, luckily. And these are peptide boosters with amino acid complex. When it comes to beauty products, you can't really ever tell what's working, what's not. I am using it just in case. I really like it, easy to use. I have one in my current beauty routine and I'm planning on buying a replacement because I do want to keep it in my skincare routine in the foreseeable future. Drunk Elephant C Pharma Day Serum. This is again a vitamin C serum and I did actually really like it. I would consider buying it again, but I currently am trying other products, uh, which might actually be even better, but I did like it. I did like the serum. 18 Actives Anti-Aging Vitamin C Wrinkle Defense. Now I got it from TK Maxx quite a while back. I actually used it as a moisturizer rather than serum. I genuinely can't remember much about it, to be fair. Dr. Seba Serum Repair Hyaluronic Acid. This is basically, this is something that I always have in my skincare routine, a hyaluronic acid or products with hyaluronic acid. This is crazy expensive, in my opinion, for what it is. I am absolutely not going to be buying it again. Um, I can't remember where I even got it from. I would not have bought it because I think it costs like between 40 and 60 pounds. Actually, I have a price here, um, 69 pounds for 20 milliliters of hyaluronic acid. No, thank you. Was it okay? Yes, it was, but it was literally comparable to the ordinary hyaluronic acid. So what is in this bottle that is worth 69 pounds, someone tell me. Speaking of the devil, the ordinary hyaluronic acid works just fine. I keep repurchasing it. It's really inexpensive. It doesn't take long to go through the entire bottle, but given the price, which according to my notes here, you know, it's from a, a little while back, so maybe the prices have already increased. Um, it is six pounds and 40 pence. So comparing to 16 pounds and this one is and this one is even bigger. It's 30 milliliters. Mjol, mjol, <laughs> more hyaluronic acid. This one is from the Inky List. I really don't mind the Inky List um, products, but what I don't like is the packaging. It's really bad. I always get too much out and I can't help it because you have very little control over what's coming out, unlike with the, the ordinary products. So... I don't mind the product, I just don't like the packaging. The Inky List Collagen Booster. I bought it just to try it. I have no clue what's in it, to be quite honest. But whenever I hear Collagen Booster, I'm like, yes, please. So I did use it, but I'm not going to be repurchasing it. I kind of like to know what exactly I have in my products. And I can probably 
find out, but I already have a ton of products in my beauty routine anyway, so I don't feel like I need an extra. The Inculus Q10 Serum. I currently have another one in my beauty routine, so this is an ingredient that not many people are talking about anymore. This is something that I remember from literally the 90s, from the very beginning of the anti-aging skincare. You would often hear ads on TV where uh, of, of products basically saying that Q10 coenzyme um, is included and that was meant to be anti-aging and I did read somewhere that yes there are some studies that indicate that this is um, something that does fight signs of aging so I was like you know what I might as well just include it better be safe than sorry I guess the ordinary 100% plant derived squalane I did like this product. Um, it is very moisturizing, very hydrating, really good for dry skin. My skin, it's combination. It's not very dry in any particular place. Um, it tends to get oily throughout the day, but since I started to use tretinoin, I have noticed that it's primarily, I would say, normalish. Uh, so I no longer um, produce as much oil, basically. So um, I am trying to include more moisturizing products in my everyday beauty routine because I just need it because my skin, especially in winter, tends to be very dehydrated and really uncomfortable. And again, by the ordinary, you can see that I like the brand, 100% cold pressed virgin marula oil. I genuinely can't even remember what marula oil, oil is for. I was kind of just buying different products to try them out to see if I like them or not. I can't quite remember if I like this product or not. I definitely didn't dislike it because I would have remembered it, um, but I suppose it didn't impress me enough to kind of keep it in mind for a future purchases. And this is it for serums, oils, and leave-in treatments, although I don't think I had any. The total for this category comes to 361 pounds and 98 pence. The next category is um, literally just conditioners for my eyelashes and my eyebrows which I really no longer use because I didn't see literally I didn't see any benefits I know some people have great results and I use these for a long time and I spent a lot of money on them um, I did not see any difference whatsoever so I have two of the Revita brow full size conditioners for my eyebrows and here's a mini of the Revita lash I still have one eyelash serum um, that I'm kind of using every now and then because it just really doesn't do anything for me so I'm not particularly committed to using it all the time. I am, you know, I'm still using it because it's so expensive so once I've used that up I'm not going to be buying any more um, eyelash conditioners because it, they just don't help me in particular. I know some people, some people have amazing results but clearly I'm just not uh, suitable for, for those kind of products. And the total, just for those two literally and a half products, comes to 228 pounds. This is why I no longer use those products. The next category is face creams, and I'm quite surprised because I have literally only two products in this category. The first one is a Clinique Dramatically Different Moisturizing Lotion. This is actually a fairly well, it's not a fairly big product. It is a big product. It's 125 milliliters, so it's pretty much twice, two and a half times as big as a regular face cream. I did like it, it was really good, it was really moisturizing. Um, it's just that that's all there is really, you don't really get anything extra as far as I can tell, aside from the moisture, but it is a product that I would consider using in the future because it is really good. Now here's a product that I don't like and it's very rare for me to say, I really don't like something. And this is Dr. Botanical's Free Radical Protecting Daily Moisturizer. I really didn't like the texture. It didn't give me enough moisture and it was very light, the consistency. Genuinely couldn't wait to finish this product. It's very rare for me to actually have a skincare product that I genuinely dislike. And this unfortunately was just that. And the total for the face creams comes to 117 pounds. Whoa, 117 pounds. How did this happen? I'm gonna double check that actually. Oh my gosh. I, I've done the research. So according to my research, the cream, which I did not like, costs 84 pounds. 
I most certainly didn't spend that much. I think I bought it from TK Maxx. But imagine buying a cream for £84 and disliking it. I mean, I wouldn't be able to sleep at night. Now, my under eye products, and this includes both serums and creams. My under eyes um, is the problem area on my face. This is where I have the most wrinkles. It's just because of how my face is. And my face is very animated, which might not be shown on camera because I'm concentrating. Um, but overall, you can see when I'm smiling, my cheeks go up and basically um, there are those little lines forming in my under eye area. So I tend to spend quite a lot of money on this area. Not that I have really found anything that really works. The first one is by Kiehl's. This is power strength, powerful strength line reducing and dark circle diminishing vitamin C eye serum. Honestly, this is a very, very long name. This is basically with L-ascorbic acid. That's why I've been with purchasing it and I've been using it for quite some time. It's okay. I don't really like the texture of it, to be honest, but I... I've just not been able to really find an under eye serum with L-ascorbic acid, so that's why I've been using this. Now we have Shaba Complex Eye Serum by Drunk Elephant. Um, this was quite a strange product because about halfway through me using it, it just started to smell really bad. Um, I actually contacted, I think I got it from Space and K and they asked me to send it to them and they sent another one back, but the other one smelled just as bad. So finally I contacted Drunk Elephant and they said that whatever the smell, that's fine. Um, it's very, it's, it's a strange response mainly because how do you know when the product has expired, when you should disregard the bad smell um, of it? Um, I don't know. I mean, I... I'm not a chemist, I don't know how this stuff works. But this is basically what they said, that because they don't use fragrance, product can smell whatever it smells, um, but that was a really bad smell that I actually noticed. I don't normally notice smell in my product, if there's any. Now here's uh, potentially my favorite under eye cream of all times. This is by Natura Bise, and this is C plus C plus C vitamin I. This is basically with vitamin C. Um, this is a very expensive under eye cream. It's 15 mils, which is standard for under eyes, but the, the product actually costs 55 pounds, which is a lot. But I can tell you, this is, this is literally the only product that I used in the morning in 2021 and that's all I needed. I literally need a teeny tiny drop and it's enough. So even though it's really expensive, it lasts ages. That's the only cream that I used because I used this in the morning. So I would have had more under eye products with vitamin C had I run out of it. But apparently, um, okay, well, yes, I did start using another one of these in 2021, but basically this lasted me more than six months. So expensive, yes, but a little goes a really long way. So in the end, actually, it might be it might be worth the price. Now by Honest Beauty Deep Hydration Ice Cream. I didn't care for this cream. I was quite disappointed because honestly, it really didn't do anything that a drugstore eye cream wouldn't do. Caudalie Resveratrol Lift Firming Eye Gel Cream. I don't remember much about it, to be honest. So again, just regular under eye cream, I suppose. And the last one is a sample size or travel size 7.5 mils. And this is by Pericon MD Soothing and Hydrating Eye Cream. Exactly the same. I don't remember literally anything about it. The total for this one category comes to 241 pounds. It's a lot for just one area of your face. Now I have two lip balms. It's only actually really recently that I got into lip balms. My lips tend to be quite dry, but I never really bother. So recently or 
really last year I started to use lip balms a little bit more often, but primarily I use a lip balm or a lip mask when I go to bed to work overnight. This year I am using one almost daily throughout the day as well. So last year I used the Fresh Sugar Coconut Hydrating Lip Balm. I was really surprised because I, I actually really liked it. I didn't think it was potent enough for my dry lips to be used overnight, but it was really good. Then this one was by Dr. Hauschka and this is I think just called the lip balm. Yeah, this is just the lip balm. It was okay. I don't really remember um, much about it to be fair. The total for this category comes to £25.75. And, and I have one product under fragrance. This is by Clarence. I never pronounce it correctly. Oh, the name is sound. Um, Vitality, Freshness, Firmness. This was a sample size, 15 ml. That's the only fragrance I used up in 2021. And the estimated cost was four pounds. Now moving on to masks, face masks to be precise. And I am really surprised and I was very surprised towards the end of last year when I realized how many face masks I actually used. And this is because I was using a face mask pretty much every single day. I would normally use two a day. So I've gone through quite a few. And on top of that, I really like overnight uh, moisturizing masks, especially in winter. Right now I'm not using one because my skin just doesn't need it. But in winter, yeah, I I've told you about tretinoin. In winter, it's just like double the trouble basically. So I really need as much moisture as I can find. I literally have an entire box of these. So the first one is by Clarence. This is the Pure and Radiant Mask with pink clay. I really like clay masks and I really like this particular mask. I'm just kind of thinking that it didn't do anything extra that a regular drugstore clay mask wouldn't do. It was really nice, it just didn't really wow me in terms of um, when comparing to, let's say, other face masks. And I do have, well, I do have, I think, a couple here that are actually from drugstore. This is by a brand that I know nothing about. I think it's called Good Things. And this is Manuka Honey Radiance Face, face Mask. I didn't actually like this mask. This is, I believe, a drugstore brand. I didn't like it because when I put it on my face, it would, it would start to flake as it was becoming dry. And I would sometimes eat, like, eat dinner and have this mask on and I would have all of those flakes all over me and my food. And I was like, what is this at first? And then I realized it was this mask that was flaking. L'Oreal Pure Clay Glow Mask. I had all three of them from this range. And I did actually like it. So again, this is basically just comparable to the Clarins one, but it is uh, it is cheaper. Origins Original Skin Retexturizing Mask with Rose Clay. I did like this mask. I am thinking to repurchase it at some point. I overall really like Origins masks. I think they are really good. Uh, most of the ones I've had, and I've had quite a few, were really nice. And this one was no exception. Kios Algae Mask. I did not like this mask. I genuinely cannot really find very many products from Kiehl's that I would in fact like. I just use it up because this was one of my older masks. So I kind of tried to use it as often as possible. Overall, noticed absolutely no difference in terms of how my skin felt or how it looked or anything of the sort. Bioderma moisturizing mask for sensitive dehydrated skin. I find masks like this a little bit problematic, so I didn't really like this mask, mainly because you actually have to remove it afterwards, um, like with cloth or something like this. And I find that masks that you actually have to remove at all from your face, um, they really don't work moisturizing masks anyway. I did try to leave it on, um, kind of like an overnight mask, which is my preference. And I think my face just felt so dry when I left it on. It basically had this dry layer of, um, well, mask on it. So yeah, I just, I, I don't like it. And I'm not, I don't think I'm gonna be buying uh, those kind of masks again. If anything, I'm just gonna buy um, a sleeping mask, not something that you have to remove when it comes to moisturizing masks. This is a holy grail mask, really. This is by Origins Drink Up Intensive. This is um, just a, a like a travel size. I love this mask. I've loved this mask for a long time. It does a lot for my skin when it's really dry. Um, it is fragranced, which is, 
you know, it's it's a pleasant smell, but I guess um, if you have a sensitive skin, it might not work for you. I don't have a sensitive skin, but I still try not to put fragrance on my skin because it's unnecessary and um, maybe it doesn't really do anything, uh, no harm to my skin, but I'd rather just avoid anything that is just unnecessary, basically. But I love this mask. Um, again, I might be repurchasing in the future, but right now I just don't need more overnight moisturizing masks. Clarence SOS Hydra Refreshing Hydration Mask. Uh, this is um, like a travel size mini. Um, I really didn't know how to use this mask because I think you have to wash it off, but I, as I said, I don't like washing moisturizing um, masks off my face because they don't work. So I tried it as an overnight mask and it really didn't go so well so I would not be buying it. Rodeo Dragon's Blood Hyaluronic Mask. Now this is again I think a sleeping mask at least that's how I used it and this was actually really good. I really liked it so I would consider repurchasing it. It did definitely um, leave my skin really moist and um, prevented dehydration which is what I'm trying to fight. Another moisturizing sleeping mask. Um, Etude House Bubble Tea Sleeping Pack. This, I believe, is no longer available, but I really liked it. I really liked it. It's very lightweight, a little bit of a pain to use because you had those little bubbles at the uh, bottom like you would have in bubble tea. Then you had to mix the two and just like too much hassle, but overall it was a really nice product. The Crime Shop Wake Up Skin. Um, there were three masks here, three sheet masks. I genuinely don't really remember uh, having much of an impression of this particular mask. Um, probably did something, moisturized a little bit, but nothing that stands out to me. Boo Boo Skincare T-Spot Blemish Busting Sheet Mask. I didn't even use it as a, sheet, as a sheet mask, to be honest. I kind of used it in problem areas on my body, uh, kind of as a spot treatment or more like a serum, so yeah. I basically just use it as a serum. Free masks from Origins Flower Fusion, Jasmine, Violet, and Raspberry. Again, sheet masks, and once again, didn't really notice much. They definitely moisturize, uh, but other than that, honestly, I, I could live without them. Now, the one mask, the one sheet mask that actually made a visible difference was from Sarah Chapman, and this is Skinesis 3D Moisture Infusion. I had only one of these, and it was amazing. I never expected it to do anything, to be honest. I find sheet masks to be quite gimmicky, but this one was really good. I don't know what it did, but it just calmed my skin. It was so supple and moist. And, well, normally those masks, they come with a lot of extra serum. So what I do, I simply use it as a serum. So once I've applied it to my face, I keep this little sachet and then just apply it to my face every day instead or on top of my regular uh, serum. This is something that I was surprised actually changed my skin. Um, it wasn't a permanent change, but you, you could feel the difference basically after you applied this. And actually, this is on my wish list because this is really expensive. I think you get four set of, a set of four for I think sixty pounds. That's that's a lot. But as I said, I do use it as a serum, so I don't actually waste any of it. I will get the last drop out. So this way, it's not as expensive, but it's still expensive. And the last product is from Dr. Dennis Gross, and this is Alpha Beta Extra Strength Daily Peel. Uh, you get those two wipes and you just kind of wipe your face with them. I didn't really notice anything. I think one wipe or two wipes um, is just not really enough to make a difference. Maybe if I kept using this on an everyday basis and I actually have another um, another um, asset from Dr. Dennis Gross that I keep forgetting to use and that one actually is really good. So this is it in terms of masks. That was actually quite a lot. And the total for this particular category 
comes to 208 pounds and 47 pence. Now moving on to cleansers, I actually have quite a few. So I have two face washes. One is from Clarence and this is Gentle Foaming Cleanser with Shea Butter. I really like this. You know, it's a cleanser, so I'm not really too, too fussy. Um, so I think I can probably find something simply cheaper, but it is really good. And then I have a fresh soy face cleanser. I don't really understand the fast. This is a famous cleanser, but I don't see like what's the big deal about it. So I'm not thinking to repurchase. I'm not thinking to repurchase either, but um, of the two, I am more likely to get this one. And the total for those two products comes to 36 pounds. Now I have quite a few makeup removers and my preference is for balms and oils. Um, so, and I have one fairly unusual item, I suppose. And let's start with this. So this is actually a coconut oil. This is from Tesco, which is a supermarket. Tesco Organic Virgin Coconut Oil. It was about to expire and I had a full tub. So I started using it to remove my makeup and it worked like a charm. It was just as good as the Clinique Take the Day Off. It didn't clog my pores and didn't cause acne or breakouts or anything of the sort, didn't cause me any problems whatsoever. Worth trying, I suppose. It cost three pounds, I think. So um, a lot cheaper than any other cleanser or a balm you can possibly find even in drugstore. Then I have the Slay Makeup Melting Butter Cleanser with uh, from Drunk Elephant. Uh, this is fairly expensive for a face cleanser, so I would not be repurchasing it. It was okay. It really was just okay, so it's definitely not worth the price tag. Now I'm gonna show this to you in a box. Um, there's five of the pie um, cleansing oils, I can't remember what they're called. Lightwork Rose Hip Cleansing Oil. These are the uh, minis, uh, 28 mils each, and there's five of them. At first I didn't quite like them, but then I actually got used to them and they work just fine, but I would not be buying these. And finally, I actually have some uh, makeup removers, the normal kind of makeup removers, and these are, are they all, yeah. They are all instant eye makeup remover from Clarence. These are all travel size or sample size. Um, so I have two that are 50 mils, and I have one that is 30 mils. I use them because I had them, but I would not be buying anything like that in the future because I just really like the cleansing balms or oils and they work the best for me. This is fine for a makeup remover. And the total for my makeup removers, including all of these, comes to £149.30. Pence. That's a lot of money to remove your makeup. I might consider getting that coconut oil in the future. In 2021, I finished one hand wash. Uh, I wouldn't normally be including hand wash if it was just a normal one that you get from supermarket, but this is the fancy one. This is Aesop Resurrection Aromatique Hand Wash. Um, it was nice, a very lovely bottle, nice. It looks nice in the bathroom. Okay, fine. I have one more of these right now in my bathroom, but it's just for the aesthetic um, reasons rather than because there's anything special about this hand wash. And that one product cost 29 pounds. Now moving on to shower gels and uh, body cleansers. I have quite a few actually. Some of them are minis. So the first one is Dr. Paw Paw. Paw Paw. Um, every, everybody hair and body wash. I never washed my hair with it. It was just used as a shower gel. I like the smell, but it was very liquidy. So I wouldn't be repurchasing that. Then I have three shower gels from Chorus. The first one is um, basil and lemon. I have another one of these that I'm nearly done with in my bathroom right now. A pleasant smell, but it's not strong enough. You can hardly smell it. And then I have two that smell like fig. Again, if you sniff it right from the bottle, you can smell it, but you can't really smell it when you're uh, lathering it on your skin. So I don't, I don't think it's really worth um, you know, the, the price to be honest, but it's it's fine. Um, then I have some minis. So this is from L'Occitane and this is Verbena shower gel. This is 50 mils. Again, not a huge, not a huge fan. Um, and I have three minis from Start Happy, geranium and peppermint and 
eucalyptus and bergamot. These are really tiny. These are 30 mils each. They were fine. I'm not fussy about what I wash my body with. The total for all of these comes to 46 pounds and 50 pence. Gosh, that's quite a lot to spend on um, just washing your body in a year. It's four pounds a month. And I managed to use one bath oil. I don't normally take baths, I take showers. I got into baths only literally this year, more. Well, actually I did take some baths last year as well, but um, anyway, I normally take a shower and this is by Ren and this is the Moroccan Rose Otto bath oil. It's a mini. It lasted me, I think, one bath. 10 mils. The estimated value of that is three pounds. Now moving on to body moisturizers. So I have only two actually body moisturizers, which is quite strange to be fair. I do try to moisturize a little bit more. The first one is from Ameliorate and this is Transforming Body Lotion. It's really good. I have another one of these in my bathroom right now. Um, it's just good for exfoliating. And the other one is a tiny Nukes, Nukes multi-purpose dry oil for face, body and hair. I, I don't really care much for dry oil, oils to be honest so I think I have one more of this one in my bathroom but I wouldn't really be buying that. And the total for this category comes to £27. Now I have quite a few hand creams. Hand cream is something that I use a lot because I tend to have really dry hands. I basically moisturize my hands every single day a number of times a day and then before I go to bed as well. Let's start from the CO Bigelow. I have two in the berg bergamot scent. Now these smell like perfume. They smell lovely, but that's not really what I expect from a hand cream. It was just literally too strong. I would use those only throughout the day because I wouldn't be able to sleep at night. You know, when you put your hand under your cheek and you, you have this strong smell, however pleasant it is, it's just not what you want when you're going to sleep. So these were lovely. It's just that I wasn't prepared for them to actually smell so strong. Then I have Cow Shed Hand Cream, Restore Hand Cream. This was quite nice. It smelled nice as well. Um, not as strong as the CO Bigelow, um, but yeah, it was a fairly nice uh, hand cream. Then another strong smelling hand cream was from Sol de Janeiro and this is Brazilian Touch Hand Cream. Um, very nice smell again too much fragrance for my liking. And then I have three minis, which I love. I actually bought these again during the Christmas sale. And these are by Caudalie. They're tiny hand creams. I think they're only 30 mils each. Let me just have a look, yes. And uh, they are in Rose de Vin. Oh God, I'm not even gonna attempt to tell you the names of the fragrances because they are in French and I really don't speak French. Uh, but they smelled really nice. I was really surprised, but they were not as strong as the other ones. So I really like that as well. And finally, the last one is from Ameliorate and this is Intensive Hand Therapy. I, I'm surprised that I've used up only one of um, this. I use this only when I go to bed. So before I go to bed, before I literally go to sleep, I use this because this basically works the same as the, um, the body version. It basically exfoliates a little bit and moisturizes at the same time. So I just wanted to do its work and that's when I put it on in the evening. And the total for my hand creams comes to 81 pounds and 60 pence, which is quite a lot for hand cream alone. And the last category, hair care. I have a lot of stuff here. Let's start with the shampoos. So the first shampoo is from L'Oreal Professional and this is the Enforcer. A professional shampoo strengthening anti-breakage for fragile hair. I didn't notice anything. Um, I would not be buying it. Again, it didn't really moisturize. Um, I, that's what I normally need because I have very dry processed hair, as you can see. I would not be buying this shampoo again. Another shampoo I'm not going to be buying again is from Virtue. This was £36. I actually have a price on the back of the bottle. And this one is Recovery Shampoo. I didn't like it, it was very liquidy. It would actually leak. If you put it upside down, it would leak. And that's a 36 pound shampoo, so no, thank you very much. I am not planning on buying anything in the near future from this brand at all because I just felt so disappointed with this particular 
shampoo and another disappointing shampoo honestly it was a year of hair disappointments for me apparently this is from Brogio don't despair repair super moisture shampoo now this is this is huge this is 473 milliliters that's literally twice as big as a regular shampoo but so what you would have thought that you're getting value for money no because it doesn't foam it doesn't really distribute through your hair so you basically need to use more on top of that this this thingy it would just come off really easily it's a it's a heavy bottle and sometimes you would just grab it and it would just literally come off so no, thank you very much. I'm not particularly happy with this either. So the shampoo total, I'm quite surprised that I've used up only three given how long my hair is, but I wash it normally only once a week. The total is 83 pounds and 40 pence. Now conditioners, masks, oils, and leave-in treatments. Um, I have literally an entire basket of that to show you. Look at this. Some disappointments here as well, but some pretty good products as well. Let's start with the Venus. I don't know how to pronounce it. OI conditioner, OI conditioner, absolute beautifying conditioner. I think it was white inside the container. I did not like it. It didn't really do anything for my hair. Then again, natural tech nourishing hair building pack. Same story. I tried this as well and it really did hardly anything for my hair. Given the price, I would have expected better from the Venus. This being said, I am now using some amazing products from the Venus, so um, it's just the ones I used last year that didn't work for me. The next one is from Wella or Vella Professionals in Rich Moisturizing Treatment for Fine to Normal Hair. I hardly remember anything about this uh, conditioner or mask. I suppose it worked to some extent, but it definitely didn't wow me. The next one is from L'Oreal, Less Unlimited Carotenoid Complex. I did like this mask. Um, I think my taste might have changed a little bit, so I wouldn't be really repurchasing it now. Um, I just it, it didn't do enough for me, but it was it was quite all right. Now some leave-in treatments. This is from Davina as well. It's oil all-in-one milk, a multi-benefit beauty treatment. It was a travel size. Um, I used it up. I really didn't notice any difference with my hair. I would not be buying it again. And it has really great reviews, so I don't know why it didn't work for me. I just didn't notice anything basically. Now this is something that I like but this has been discontinued. This is from Origins actually. This is their, um, I don't know, it was it a separate brand, Ocean. Um, but basically it was kind of like um, an oil. It's really small. Look at this comparing to my hand. It's really small. And apparently this, this little thing retail for 34 pounds. And for my long dry hair, I would literally go through at least one third of this container, if not more, in one go. And that, you know, I, and I was very frugal with that, let's put it this way. I did I did like it, but I wouldn't repurchase it for the price, even if I could. Inner Sense uh, Hydrating Hair Mask. I did like the mask. I think this is travel size, is it? I don't, I'm not sure. It's 118 mils. I did like it. Um, yeah. It, it did it did help my hair um, so I might I might repurchase it at some point. L'Oreal professional enforcer professional conditioner strengthening anti breakage for fragile hair to go with the shampoo. Didn't really care for it. It didn't do anything bad, but um, it's just not good enough for my hair, I'm afraid. And last but not least is a sample and this is by way. It's so sticky. This is just a hair oil, 10 mils. I use hair oils all the time. I don't really know if they do anything, but this was basically on par with every other hair oil I've ever used. So I'm not buying it. I can just put it this way. And the total for all of those hair conditioners, masks and treatments comes to 243 pounds and 45 pence. That's quite a bit. That's 20 pounds a month, basically. Last but not least is a sample from Bumble and Bumble, and this is BB Grooming Creme. I used it because I had it. Did it do anything to my hair? I did not notice. I most certainly wouldn't be re uh, repurchasing it. I don't really buy styling products to begin with very much, so yeah, I, yeah, no, 
No, thank you. And these are all the products that I've used up in 2021. I'm literally out of breath rushing through this video. Um, it's an hour and a half of footage up to, up to this point. So the total, an estimated total, as I've previously mentioned for 2021 empties um, comes to 2,696 pounds and 48 pence. That is over $3,000. I know I didn't pay that much and I'm glad that I'm using what I have and what I buy. <laughs> but let's put it this way, I do have some expensive taste, but a lot of the time it's actually justified because some of the products are just simply better, higher end. Anyways, if you have managed to get through this video up to this point, thank you very much. I hope that you enjoyed it. If you did, then please give it a like and I do hope you will subscribe to my channel. There will be more similar videos coming out soon, so stay tuned. Thanks so much again and I hope to see you very soon. Bye guys.